Welcome to SNMP. This short tutorial will quickly introduce you to the various concepts in SNMP and help you make informed decisions regarding your upcoming SNMP project. SNMP is an acronym for Simple Network Management Protocol and it generally refers to a whole collection of related network management concepts. It belongs to the TCP IP family of specifications defined by the IETF or the Internet Engineering Task Force. Work on SNMP started in 1989 and it has evolved to include three versions, SNMP v1, SNMP v2c, and SNMP v3. SNMP opens up a window into the inner workings of a managed entity and allows you to remotely look inside it. It also allows you to reach in through this window and configure it. And it allows the managed entity to let you know when interesting things happen to it. So as a network manager sitting in San Francisco, you can find out how many packets your router in New York has received, disable a port on it, or receive an indication from the router that one of its interfaces just went down. The two entities that talk SNMP with one another are called manager and agent. An agent is typically embedded inside the device to be managed, while the manager can be a set of applications running in a network management framework. In order for two entities to communicate with one another, they need to share a common understanding of the data being exchanged and use the same mechanism to exchange that data. In the world of SNMP, the common understanding of data being exchanged is defined in the SNMP MIPS and the common mechanism to exchange the data is defined in the SNMP protocol. MIB is an acronym for Management Information Base. The word MIB is used to refer to both the document defining the database structure or schema as well as the actual database repository. The MIB document defines the various manageable objects using ASN.1 syntax. SNMP v1 used a syntax called SMIv1, Structure of Management Information v1, while SNMP v2c and SNMP v3 use an updated version of the syntax called SMIv2. Manageable objects are modeled as either scalar objects or columnar objects. Scalar objects are used to model data elements that are unique in nature, like a company's name, while columnar variables are part of a table structure to model data elements that would be multiple in nature, like a list of employees. The object type or class definition of an object specifies its syntax, its access class, its description, and its place in a larger registration tree. The place where it fits in the registration tree determines a part of its name. The sysdisid node, which is part of the standard RFC 1213 MIB, is shown at the bottom of the diagram as part of a larger object registration tree. Proprietary MIBs defined by companies such as Cisco get defined under the private enterprises node. The part taken from the root of the tree to the specified object determines its object class identifier. In this case, the part taken from the root at the top of the diagram, which is ISO, to sysdisr would be from ISO1.org3.dod6.internet1.management2.mip21 dot system one to sysdisr one to give us one dot three dot six dot one dot two dot one dot one dot one as the object class identifier. The full identifier or name of the sysdisr manageable object is made up of two parts. Its class identifier of one dot three dot six dot one dot two dot one dot one dot one and its instance component. For scalar objects like sysdisr, where there is only one of this type of object, the instance component is always the special value of zero. So the full object identifier for sysdisr manageable object becomes sysdisr.0 or 1.3.6.1.2.1.1.1.0. 
For columnar objects that are part of a table, the value of the columns of the table that make up the key or the index of the table become part of its instance component. Managed objects defined in the MIB are kept in a lexicographically sorted manner in the agent. Lexicographically sorted means sorted as in a dictionary. The main operations are get, which is used to retrieve the value of a given manageable object, set, which is used to chain the value of a given manageable object, get next, which is used to get the value of the lexicographically next variable, and useful when traversing tables in manageable objects whose instance components are not known beforehand, and trap, which is sent by the device to the alert the manager about an anomaly. SNMP packets run on top of a connectionless UDP service and use well-defined ports of 161 and 162. Managers send SNMP requests to the agent on port 161, and agents simply send responses back to whatever source port was used by the manager. Agent sends traps to port 162 of the specified manager. This diagram shows the actual structure of the SNMP v1 message. The SNMP v1 message is made up of a version field, a community field, and an SNMP PDU or protocol data unit field. The value of the community field acts like a password and determines what operations are allowed. The structure of the get get next, set, and response PDUs is similar, while that of the trap PDU is different. The variable bindings are made up of the variable name and its value. The values of the enterprise ID, generic, and specific fields taken together uniquely identify a SNMP v1 trap. SNMP v1 became quite popular and started getting deployed in large numbers. With experience, the shortcomings of SNMP became more apparent. And so in 1992, a set of enhancements were published to address these shortcomings that included proposals to add security and authentication to the SNMP protocol. But these sets of proposals turned out to be too complicated to deploy, and only parts of it, called SNMP v2c or SNMP v2 with community strings, got deployed. It included additional PDU types like get bulk to make table retrieval more efficient, better error codes to give the manager an idea of what went wrong, an updated syntax for defining MIPS, and better support for distributed management. This diagram shows the actual structure of the SNMP V2C message. Unlike SNMP V1, all PDU types have basically a similar structure, except that get bulk includes non-repeats and max repetitions in the place of error status and error index. In forms, which are used in distributed management, define a mechanism for an agent to send a trap-like packet for which the manager sends an acknowledgement back using a response PDU. Report PDUs, while defined in SNMP v2c, are used in SNMP v3 to sync up between the manager and agent implementations. Finally, in 1998, a new set of documents specified the security and authentication enhancement to the SNMP protocol that were accepted. They also included remote management of the users, their keys, and privileges. SNMP v3 is now the official SNMP standard, and SNMP v1 and v2c are now designated as historic by the IETF. SNMP v3 added wrappers around the older SNMP v2 PDU structure to include support for authentication and privacy. The authentication provided safeguards against masquerading and replay attacks, while privacy added encryption to keep the contents of the packet secret from wire snooping. To encode the SNMP message structure described earlier as actual bits on the wire, SNMP uses a subset of the basic encoding rules that are also part of the ASN.1 or Abstract Syntax Notation 1 specification. Each field in the packet is encoded in three parts, tag, length, and value. Tag specifies the data type of the field, length indicates the length of the value field that follows, and value specifies the actual value of the field. 
As shown in the example, an integer with a value of 5 would be encoded as 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 5. A sample packet exchange showing the different fields of the SNMPV1 packet and the corresponding hex values for the encoded message on the wire are shown. The manager is sending a get next request for syscontact to the agent and the agent is responding with the value of syscontact at zero, which is lexicographically the next variable to syscontact. So to summarize what we have covered so far, there are three versions currently defined, SNMP v1, SNMP v2c, and SNMP v3. MIPS define the list of manageable objects using the SMI syntax and ASN.1 macros. Manageable objects or variables have a name that it is made up of its class identifier that is based on the location in the registration tree and the value of the instance component. SNMP runs on top of UDP and uses well-defined ports 161 and 162. SNMP includes operations like get, get next, set, get bulk, and traps in forms and reports. Now let's take a look at a typical agent development process. You must first identify a list of manageable objects in your device. Next, you should see if some of these are already defined in existing standard MIPS. If there are manageable objects not covered by standard MIPS, you can define your own enterprise-specific MIP that is under the private section of the registration tree. After the MIPS are defined, you must select a commercial or open source SNMP stack and port it to your hardware or real-time operating system. After the SNMP stack is ported, you should write interface functions to hook the MIP code to the underlying instrumentation. Then, when the agent is ready, you should test it for compliance with the specification to ensure interoperability. On the management application side, you need to import clean up the MIP supported by the device you want to manage. Then you need to choose an appropriate GUI framework and SNMP API library that would suit your requirements. You can then develop the application and test it for functionality, error handling, and scalability. Later on, it might be necessary to integrate this application into a larger and widely used management framework. For over 20 years, SimpleSoft solutions have been used by more than a thousand networking and network management companies during the development and testing of their products. The simple MIB editor is a graphical MIB editor that helps you quickly create and clean up MIPS. And Simple MIB Editor Pro can also assist in automatically generating stub access functions for the popular NetSNMP open source SNMP stack. Once the agent is developed, you can use the simple tester to automate the syntax, semantic, and performance testing, and the simple sleuth product to check for vulnerabilities to malformed SNMP packets in a denial of service attack. If developing management applications, the Simple Agent Pro and Simple Agent Enterprise can simulate thousands of devices on one computer, allowing you to do scalability and functional testing, duplicate customer environments, and create realistic sales demos. The simple MIB browser helps send basic SNMP commands, and the simple SNMP proxy helps with version translation and accessing SNMP devices across firewalls in a DMZ. Some of the other resources that might be helpful include a fairly detailed frequently asked questions log at faqs.org. A couple of noteworthy books on the subject include those by William Stallings on SNMP, and Dave Perkins and Ivan McGuinness on MIPS. We hope you find this short tutorial useful. If we can be of additional assistance, please contact us via email at sales at simplesoft.com or visit our website at www.simplesoft.com. We wish you the best for all your SNMP projects and look forward to working with you in the future.